All right, today we're on US-2, just a few miles west of St. Ignace, Michigan, and we're at the site of two different historic locations. One is a long gone Ottawa Native American Indian village here on West Moran Bay. The original burial ground for the Indian village is here as a cemetery called Gross Caps Cemetery. And the old maps indicate that the Native American village was just to the west of this, starting you know, probably back in where those trees are there and extending across the road into the other wooded area on the other side of US-2. It seemed to be a very large village that so probably encompassed a wide area around this location. Now this cemetery is believed to be at least 300 years old, which makes it one of the oldest cemeteries in the country that is still in use to this day. I can't recall reading about any famous people who are buried here, but uh, I imagine in some areas here there are some very, very old grave sites, probably not even marked. Let's just dive through and see what some of the older ones we see are. Well, there's one from 1904. You can usually tell because a lot of the style of the cemetery markers will change over the years. And the motif and the decoration changes too. That one there, you can tell by the rounded top and the style of the carving in it that it's very old. And again, that one there, a more modern look to it. A very in interesting old burial ground here in the northern areas of Michigan. Right, there's one there that dates to 1880. That one, that one right there dates to 1880. Here's one that caught my eye. Here, get down, Papa. Here's, here's one that caught my eye. It's got a laser engraved photo on it of a man with a beard. And it says, the Deer Whisperer. Now, that's pretty cool. Many of the markers reflect the names of the early French settlers to this area. And then there's certainly a large English presence here too, as the ownership and control of the Straits area changed hands several times throughout the centuries. This tree style grave marker is a reflection of a style that was popular just after the turn of the 20th century, maybe around 1910, 1920, I would say is when this hit its peak of popularity. Also the shape of the uh, shield or badge there on top, called a federal shield, I believe, was very prominent throughout all kinds of decoration and artistic endeavors that time frame as well. I say the oldest one we managed to see was 1880 but there's no doubt in my mind that there have to be some here that date back to the early 1800s for sure. And there's a sad one there, but what a lovely design. 